Thank you for watching this video from Kingsway Soft. Today we'll be introducing our Integration Gateway solution. Integration Gateway offers real-time data integration for businesses that require data shared across all applications. Let's take a closer look at how Kingsway Soft Integration Gateway works. Modern cloud-based applications publish changes through webhooks. Integration Gateway works as a hub between webhooks and message queues or file systems. The received webhook messages are posted to a message queue or file system in real time. Real-time integration is finally achieved by having a listening service that monitors the message queue or file system and pushes the messages to a final destination. The listener service can be an SSIS package that uses a combination of our premium message queue tasks and components offered by Kingsway Soft or any other equivalent solutions. Let's now demonstrate how to configure your integration gateway. The toolbar on top contains the following buttons. Start, which starts the local HTTP server that is going to receive the webhook service calls. Stop which stops the HTTP server, restart, which restarts the HTTP server, save and apply, which will save the current configuration and apply it to the server, and finally, undo and redo. Kingsway Soft Integration Gateway works like an HTTP server that listens to incoming webhook calls by publishing the received HTTP messages to a message queue or file in a local file system. So the first thing you need to do is to create the HTTP configuration that works with the webhook interfaces that you might be connecting to. First, decide if the connection to the webhooks will be over an HTTP or HTTPS connection, and enter the local port number the server will be running on. Ensure that the port is not blocked by your network security policy or applications, such as firewalls. The max concurrent requests control the number of simultaneous requests handled by the server at one time. By default, it is set to 100. Both the access logging and detail logging settings allow you to log your configured webhook services access. The next step is to configure your inbound webhooks. Integration Gateway comes with 10 pre-installed webhooks, plus a custom configuration allowing you to configure any webhook available. Let's begin with Asana. With Asana added as an inbound webhook, click on the Manage Webhook button to configure its settings. Next, click on the Sign In to open a new dialog to enter the app information, which will be used to authenticate to the Asana service. You will need the client ID, client secret, and redirect URL assigned to the app. With the Use Default Browser to Sign In option, you can complete the authentication process through your default browser or within our software. Next, let's configure the Dropbox inbound connection. Simply add the app secret generated from Dropbox to access the configured webhook. The app secret is obtained from Dropbox's app console by creating an app with full Dropbox access. Finally, to set up the new webhook, find your app in the Dropbox app console and add the full URI of your integration gateway server in the webhook section. Note that your URI of your server needs to be publicly accessible over the internet. For example, 127.0.0.1 and localhost URIs will not work since Dropbox's servers will not be able to contact your local computer. The Allow One New Verification Request option will allow Integration Gateway to respond to the verification requests sent by Dropbox when setting up a new webhook. Up next is Facebook. Similar to Dropbox, you will need to add the app secret generated by Facebook. Create the app via Facebook for Developers. To set up the new webhook, head to Facebook's app dashboard and click on Products, Webhooks, and select User from the drop-down menu. Then click Subscribe to this object. Enter your integration server URL in the callback URL field and enter a string in the Verify token field. Facebook will send a verification request to Integration Gateway. You can then subscribe to the individual fields that would send notifications via the webhook when modified. The Allow One New Verification Request option will allow Integration Gateway to respond to the verification request sent by Facebook when setting up a new webhook. For HubSpot, you can obtain the client secret through HubSpot's developer account. From the Apps dashboard, click on the Create App button and fill out the information required. The Auth tab will contain the authentication settings, including the client ID and client secret. Back at the Apps dashboard, select the app that you like to set up webhooks for. From there, select Webhooks on the left navigation bar and enter the Integration Gateway URL and the event throttling limits. For Shopify, you will need the secret to access the configured webhook. To retrieve it, head to the Shopify admin page. 
Click on Settings, Notifications, and head to the Webhook section. Click Create Webhook, and from the first drop-down menu, select Event from the list. In the second drop-down, choose the format you would like Shopify to send the information to you. Your two choices are JSON or XML. Under URL, enter the Integration Gateway URL and click Add Webhook. The signing secret will be required to configure the inbound connection for Slack. Head over to the Slack App Management to create an app. Give the app a name and choose a workspace you want to install the app. Once created, head over to the Settings Basic Information screen. Scroll down to the app credentials and locate your signing secret. Set up the new webhook requires you to navigate to the management page of the app. Find the Events Descriptions configuration page and use the toggle to turn it on. You'll be able to select all the event types you want to subscribe to. Finally, set the request URL for your application to point to your integration gateway. For Square, you will need to create a Square application in the developer dashboard. To create a new webhook, use the developer portal to configure a client subscription. Navigate to the webhook settings page of your Square application. Set the notification URL to the integration gateway URL and select the webhook event types to listen for. For SurveyMonkey, you will need the client ID and client secret to configure the inbound connections. The Edit Subscription button will launch the SurveyMonkey Subscriptions Editor to configure the new webhooks. Hitting Sign In will open a new dialog to enter the Access Token or the App Info, which will be used to authenticate to SurveyMonkey. To create an app, head to SurveyMonkey's developer portal and log in. Head to My Apps and click Create a new private app. Review the credentials and select the scope items that you wish to use. For Trello, you will need the API secret to configure the webhook. Click on Edit Subscriptions, followed by Sign In. Click on Get Tokens to log in to Trello through a default browser to obtain your token. To configure an inbound webhook for Xero, you will need the webhook key. First, create the webhook through Xero's My Apps section on the developer portal. Select your app and choose the categories or events you're interested in. Specify the URL of the integration gateway in the Send Notifications To field and click Save. The webhook key will now be generated. Finally, the custom webhook allows you to configure any other webhook you require. Start by naming the webhook and setting the HTTP method. Next, you have two authorization options, API key and basic. With basic, you need to provide the username and password. With API key, you will need to provide the location as in where the API key will exist in the service call. That can be either HTTP header or query string. The parameter name allows you to specify the parameter name which will hold the value of your API key. And finally, the API key itself. Now that we have covered the inbound webhooks, let's take a look at the outbound connections. There are seven connections to choose from. Amazon SQS, AMQP, Azure Service Bus, IBM MQ, MSMQ, RabbitMQ, and the local file. These destinations are the data returned from the webhooks that will be sent. Let's begin with the Amazon SQS, which requires an access key and secret key. Both can be obtained from the IAM console by choosing the desired user and then selecting the Security Credentials tab. Choose to create access key and then select Download Credentials to save the access key ID and secret key to a CSV file on your computer. The Use Temporary Token will allow you to specify a temporary security token for the session, known as Security Credentials. The Region drop-down list allows you to pick the endpoint based on your region, and the AWS Account ID will enable you to specify an AWS Account ID work with shared queues. The Connection Timeout option allows you to specify a number of seconds for the requested timeout. The default value is 120 seconds. Retry on intermittent errors is an option designed to help recover from possible intermittent outages or service disruption. It prevents the integration process from stopping due to temporary issues. Enabling this option will allow service calls to be retried upon certain types of failures. A service call may be retried up to three times before an exception is fired. Retries occur after 0 seconds, 15 seconds, and 60 seconds. For an AMQP connection, you will need the host name or where the AMQP server is located, the port number you are trying to connect to, the path, which specifies the full path of the address you are trying to connect to, and the protocol scheme, which can be either AMQP or AMQPS. 
a username and password will be required to authenticate the account. The connection timeout option allows you to specify a number of seconds for the requested timeout. The default value is 120 seconds. Enabling SSL will provide you with additional settings to establish an SSL connection with the server. This includes the version of the SSL you will use as well as the ability to ignore certificate errors. Enabling ignore certificate errors option is generally not recommended, particularly for production instances, unless there is a strong reason to believe the connection is secure such as the network communication is only happening in an internal infrastructure, this option should be unchecked for best security. Certificate location allows you to specify a certificate's location that will be used with options for store or file system. With store, you can set the thumbprint of the client certificate from the certificate store. With file system, you will need to provide the path to the certificate and the certificate password. If you would like to use Azure Service Bus, you will need to specify the URL of your Azure Service Bus endpoint in the namespace field. It should follow the pattern, example.servicebus.windows.net. The service endpoint is the actual URL that is utilized for the connection manager to connect to Azure Service Bus. This field should be pre-populated for you. In special cases where you want to specify the service endpoint, you can change the value by first unlocking the field using the lock and unlock button next to it. Issue name and issue key are used for authentication. If you have a connection string, you can click the Enter Connection String button to enter it. The component will extract the relevant parts of the connection string to populate the above fields in the Connection Manager. Note that the namespace section of the connection string should typically have the suffix servicebus.windows.net. If this suffix is not part of the connection string, it will be added automatically. So the suffix is essentially optional. There are two transport types to choose from, Net Messaging and ANQP or the Advanced Message Queuing Protocol. The connectivity mode sets the underlying wire level protocol used to communicate with Service Bus. By default, it is set to Auto Detect, where it will automatically select between TCP, HTTP, and HTTPS modes based on the auto detection mechanism. If more than one is available, the system will default to TCP. You can also set the timeout value for operations with your connection and choose to ignore certificate errors. As mentioned earlier, enabling ignore certificate errors is generally not recommended, particularly for production instances. Unless there's a strong reason to believe the connection is secure, such as the network connection is only happening in an internal infrastructure, this option should be unchecked for best security. With retry on intermittent errors activated, a default setup of exceptionally increasing retry intervals for messaging operations will be provided. Uncheck this option to effectively disable retries. Using IBM MQ requires you to provide the queue manager name and identify if this is a remote manager. If the queue manager is not a local machine, it must be in the same domain. The channel name is the channel on the local machine that will be used to connect to the remote machine. This defaults to the system channel, system.admin.svrcon. You have two authentication modes available, credentials and certificates. With credentials, you will need to provide the user ID and password with the option of activating MQCSP authentication. With certificate, you will need to provide a certificate key repository location, the certificate label, the SSL cipher spec, the SSL peer name, the SSL reset count, and whether an SSL revocation check should be done. When the limit is reached with SSL reset count, IBM MQ disconnects from the queue manager and applications are notified of that as an exception with MQRC connection broken as the reason code. With MSMQ, the queue path field lets you enter the path of the queue you like connect to. If you do not know the path of your queue, you can click the browse button to launch the select queue dialog and help locate it. By default, the select queue dialog will list any Microsoft message queues that are located on the local machine. The server name dropdown will list other visible servers to your local machine and selecting a server will list any Microsoft message queues that it contains. If the server you want is not listed, you can type the name and type search to list any message queues on that server. If you'd like to create a new queue on the selected machine, click the Create Queue button. With RabbitMQ, you will require the host name, port, and virtual host as part of the connection settings. Authentication will be completed through the username and password. Set the TCP connection timeout, which is defaulted at 120 seconds, and set the heartbeat intervals. 
The heartbeat feature periodically checks to see if the connection is still active. If set to zero, heartbeats are disabled. Enabling SSL will provide additional options, including providing the name of the SSL server and version. You can also choose to ignore certificate errors, though this is not recommended for production instances. Unless there's a strong reason to believe the connection is secure, such as the network communication is only happening in an internal infrastructure, this option should be unchecked for best security. Additionally, you can specify the certificate location as either store or file system. If store, you will need to provide the thumbprint of the client certificate from the certificate store. If you choose file system, you will need to provide the path to the certificate as well as the certificate password. Finally, the file connection allows you to configure a connection to a local file from within the integration gateway to send requests to it. Simply provide the path to the file. Over on the additional settings page, you can specify the settings file's location and password where the integration gateway configurations are saved. Reload settings will load the settings from the saved configuration file. If required, you can also configure the outbound proxy server. This concludes the getting started video for our integration gateway solution. Be sure to take a look at our blog posts where we demonstrate how to facilitate real-time integration between HubSpot and Microsoft Dynamics 365, as well as integrate Salesforce data in real-time with virtually any other application or file system. Thank you for watching this video. For any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to us.